Something interesting you may have noticed when eating Cheerios in the morning is that the individual pieces tend to attract each other and clump together. This effect is fittingly called the Cheerios effect. But it doesn't just happen with Cheerios. The same effect happens with other objects floating on the surface of a liquid, like bubbles or small objects such as thumbtacks or paper clips. We can see that the water slopes upward at the edge of the Cheerio, which is the key in what causes the Cheerios effect, which we will explain in more detail later. At the edge of the bowl, where adhesion similarly causes the water to curve upwards, the same effect happens. We can see that the initially nearly still Cheerio speeds up as it gets closer to the side of the bowl. We have seen that besides the Cheerio, two thumbtacks also attract each other, except what is different for them is that the water is curving downwards at their edge instead of upwards. This is because the thumbtacks are denser than water, while Cheerios are lighter than water. The reason the thumbtacks still float is because of the surface tension of the water. We can see this by adding soap, breaking the surface tension, which causes the thumbtacks to sink while the Cheerios continue floating. A result of the different interaction the thumbtacks and the Cheerios have with the water is that they repel each other instead of attracting, like we see for the interaction between two Cheerios or two thumbtacks. Now that we have seen the effect in action, we will take a look at the physics behind it. Here we see a diagram of a floating object. The interface meets the object with an angle theta. This is known as the contact angle and it is a property of the material of the object and the liquid and gas. Because the surface of the liquid has to meet the object at this angle, it either slopes up around the object, we call this wetting, or the liquid slopes down around the object, we call this case non-wetting. This slope leads to the surface tension acting on the object having a vertical component. For a wetting object, it points down, or for a non-wetting object, it points up. It is this vertical component of the surface tension and the slope leading up to the object that together lead to the Cheerio effect. Whether an object is wetting is determined by the contact angle, its geometry and its density. This is apparent in the case of these two spheres. They have the same contact angle, but due to having a higher density, one of the spheres is more submerged and therefore becomes non-wetting, while the other is wetting. Now consider the vertical balance of forces. The object displaces a mass of liquid such that the buoyancy balances the gravitational pull and the surface tension. For a wetting object, the surface tension acts downward, so this balance is reached for a displaced mass greater than the mass of the object. When the displaced mass is larger than the mass of the object, the gravitational potential energy decreases as the object moves up along the surface. Therefore, wetting objects are attracted to high points on the surface, such as those created by wetting objects. Non-wetting objects have a displaced mass smaller than the mass of the object, and are therefore attracted to low points in the surface. This also explains why wetting and non-wetting objects repel each other, as the meniscus of one is curved in the opposite direction the other one is attracted to. In this video clip you can see part of our experiment. We looked into the movement of two thumbtacks undergoing the Cheerio effect in different liquids with a variety of surface tensions. The distance between the thumbtacks was tracked as a function of time, as can be seen in this graph. You may notice the rapid speed up as the thumbtacks get closer to each other. What can be deduced from this is that as their relative distance decreases, their attractive interaction force grows in strength. This happens regardless of the magnitude of the surface tension, though the movement was faster on liquids with higher surface tensions. The effect was seen in water-based liquids, such as water and milk as well as in oil, which seems to indicate that the Cheerio effect is an inherent effect of liquids, although it might not appear in cases where the viscosity dominates over the surface tension, such that no meniscus can form. 
From these results, we can conclude that the time required for the thumbtacks to touch each other is inversely proportional to the surface tension coefficient of the liquid as long as their initial separation is equal among all liquids. The Cheerio effect uh, does not only happen in your cereal bowl. In nature, there are also some insects that manipulate it. They use the effect to climb out of the water and reach the shore. Uh, these insects come in two groups, the water treaders and the swimmers. The water treaders are um, insects such as the Mesovalia, um, which can move on water. It has three pairs of legs, uh, the middle ones being non-wetting and the outer two pairs being wetting. Um, when this insect comes close to the meniscus that connects the shore to the, um, to the body of water, <coughs> they will push down with their middle set of legs in order to raise the menisci on the, both the outer pairs of, of legs and thus create a, um, increase the force of the Cheerio effect to pull them towards the edge. The other group of uh, animals are the swimmers. Um, these uh, insects are submerged in water and they can use their legs to, to swim. However, they are not strong enough to swim up to the meniscus and get out of the water on its edge. So what they do is they curve their bodies in order to create a menisci on, on both ends and propel themselves forward with the Cheerio effect to reach the shore. So both uh, animals use this effect to get out of the water.